Well, good afternoon, everybody. Alex Dornstadter from the Corps of Engineers. Um, that was, for me, a fascinating presentation and resonates so fabulously with what we are trying to do as well on the Corps of Engineers. I'm going to try to explain that here in just a, just a couple of minutes. But the whole notion, in my words, not yours, uh, of, of every citizen and every family member and every person a a flood fighter, every person a disaster mitigator. I mean, if we could, I mean, if we could get there, that would be absolutely fabulous. I mean, I just sort of want to echo and applaud that we are in violent agreement of our organizations. Now, we, we attack it just a little bit differently because clearly you all are at uh, are at really. To use, to use the military analogy, you are at the pointy end of the bayonet. I mean, you are really right there talking about someone crawling across splinter glass. Now, not that we are not, because we in the Corps are in, in your all's communities and our communities, of course. So, uh, but, but we do have to look at things uh, programmatically as well from, uh, you know, from the, the national, national headquarters, which, which is where I am located. So, First, if I could explain real quickly, before I take you down sort of this parade of programs that we, we consider net, uh, uh, mitigation. Um, when I think or we think of mitigation, if I had a slide, I would show you sort of this life cycle, which has four phases. It would be preparation for an event, response to an event, recovery from, and then mitigation for the next. So when we think of mitigation, that's the way I'm thinking of it. And sort of the things to take away from that are there the interdependence of the four phases and the actions and the programs that we find in each. The other thing that I would show is this sort of stair-stepped slide where we have risk on one hand and a description of different actions uh, how we would force down the risk in collaboration with an engaged and an informed public, which is exactly what you're talking about. So uh, those are actually two big takeaways, things that, that I sort of have to frame where we are going as a core, as your core of engineers. The other thing that uh, I have to describe is when we think about that, and this is all in terms of how we mitigate risk, uh, the risk of anything, natural hazard or, or man-made hazard or whatever the case might be. We think of it in terms of three elements. The threat uh, external to that system or that, uh, that, piece of, uh, uh, that piece of terrain or that asset. The vulnerability of that asset to the threat and then the consequences of failure or partial failure um, of that asset. So I would like to describe, uh, if I could, a couple of programs that we have in the Corps of Engineers that, uh, that we're using for mitigation, and then uh, close with sort of a change in Corps of Engineers culture and how we are going to address mitigation in the future. So uh, what I thought I would do, and again, this is, I hope, uh, not attribution, even though we are, we are taping it here, so let me do a sort of an aside and say all... Everything that I say right now, my bosses don't know I'm saying. They probably, after seeing this, will think I'm probably one of the dumbest folks on the planet. So bear with me as we go through. This is uh, these are my thoughts, not necessarily the organization's thoughts. So let me let me go through. So first, some of our mitigation programs that you may or may not have experience with and may may or may not know about. So first and uh, first. Uh, I would like to talk, about, uh, talk to you about a program that's in my shop called the Critical Information and Protect Critical Infrastructure and Protection Program. It is, it is uh, funded through our general expense appropriation, and it deals with uh, how we uh, actually it deals with uh, Department of Homeland Security. Right now, ongoing initiatives with uh, the FBI, the Bureau of Reclamation. Uh, on how we both identify critical infrastructure across the country and then try to identify the risks, uh, identify the consequences, uh, investigate the vulnerabilities, and then make plans, regional, regional plans or point-specific plans for mitigation. Uh, if I were to give that program a grade, and that's probably a $6.5 million program annually, uh, if I were going to do, if I were going to give grade to that program, I, I would, I would say that's probably a strong A. Uh, we, it's established 
Uh, it's well funded and uh, we are making uh, huge progress, not only internally but externally. So second program, our dam and levee safety program. Uh, now, uh, I'm assuming that you've heard something, something about that, but this is, this is an ongoing program right now in this ongoing, uh, or in, in next fiscal year actually, funded to several hundreds of millions of dollars. And we're doing everything from expanding our uh, databases to actual physical kinetic work uh, on, uh, on dams and structures uh, around the country. The levy database is being built and uh, we are trying, again, we have uh, several millions of dollars to go out and explore, uh, build a database, and then come up with, right now, a risk methodology so we can do uh, uh, better risk-informed investments uh, across our entire portfolio. Uh, that program really focuses, if we go back to threat vulnerability and consequence, focuses on the vulnerability and the consequence aspects of it. Overall, I would say, um, both programs together, a solid B. Uh, we are still, uh, some, some aspects are established, some uh, are a work in progress, especially on the, on the levy safety side of the house. Um, programs that, uh, uh, another program are, and I'm not sure if we want to call it, but uh, a le our levy vegetation program in lot or, or linked to our uh, levy, levy safety program. Uh, we are in the process right now of uh, reviewing our process for asking for a variance to the established core standards. Uh, I will not go into any of the details because it hurts me to, to be honest with you. And if you have any specific questions, I'd be happy to ask, uh, ask them, or I'd be happy to answer them after I get a couple of drinks of me. So that, that, would, be, that, that would be a good thing. Um, we are probably, I would say, uh, right now a C plus in that program, not because we don't intend on doing the right thing or that we're not doing the right thing, it's just that it is continually right now a work in progress. And uh, we are looking towards, uh, looking towards giving you all the chance to comment on our work sometime in the fall uh, with, a, uh, with a publication date sometime later, hopefully a Christmas present for everybody. Um, so that being said, that, that program right now, again, focuses really on the vulnerability and consequence side of the house. C plus, again, my grade, not anybody else. Um, the other programs, a couple of other programs uh, that you may or may not know about in, uh, uh, in our directorate here at, at the headquarters you say in contingency operations, we have a provost marshal office and we inspect for uh, the vulnerability of our structures both on military installations and off military installations. Uh, the vulnerability of those structures to uh, potentially what bad guys might do. And uh, that links in many, many other, uh, or many other aspects of our business. That program is for me a solid, a solid B plus, good funding, uh, and we apply it, uh, we apply it exceptionally well around the country. So uh, I, I would say that we have a solid program there, however the the sort of sea change, as we described, is with uh, the program that we talked about earlier today in our uh, in our workshop, which is our Silver Jackets program. And uh, what that really is is a delivery mechanism for a national flood risk management uh, investment strategy in the most appropriate places, guided by your priorities uh, and led by our states. And uh, before I, before I leave that, there are a couple of folks in the room. Now, you can ask me questions about that later if you care to. However, there are folks in the room that I'm going to call out that you can, after you, after you find them, you can ask them programs, uh, ask them questions. So Mr. Ed Hecker up here, my previous boss, is now my emeritus oracle advisor, uh, also remaining with the Corps of Engineers. And in the, back of the, in the back of the room, or sort of in the back of the room, Jennifer Dunn, who is our national, uh, the national Silver Jackets program manager, and Ms. Manuela Johnson, who is uh, the uh, Indiana State uh, uh, Department, of, or Department of Homeland Security. She is the, she is the, uh, uh, the state lead for Silver Jackets, really our best of breed out there right now when it comes to both establishing and using this program uh, to its best effect. And uh, what we try to do, just the quick, the, the, I guess the quick tabletop analogy, or if you could, mind picture would be um, uh, the, the state representative, Manuela, coming to the table she has her staff, 
and then um, FEMA, Corps of Engineers, Department of Transportation, and whoever, whoever other agencies are applicable to the program, uh, around the table, we are presented and discussed in, in sort of adult fashion, this is a problem that we have. How can we leverage our authorities? How we can apply our authorities? How can we leverage our authorizations, if you will, to, uh, to, a, to a problem on the ground? Either a point problem, a point issue, or a uh, what we're really looking for is a larger watershed uh, floodplain type of approach. So that being said, I know we're getting short on time. Um, where we, th those are some of the programs that we're working on uh, and some of the things that we're doing. Where I think we need some work. Um, first, I think we need better, we need to do a better job of integrating, that is bringing piece parts together into a whole and synchronizing application of that, of application of that stuff in space, time, and purpose to a, you know, compelling better tomorrow. Uh, and synchronize that across the life cycle. Uh, both internally and externally. So uh, we have to better prioritize both our efforts, prioritize where we are, where we are going to go, uh, and do that not only within the core but outside the core at all levels. Secondly, I think uh, we need to do a better job of interagency, intergovernmental, state, local, and federal uh, optimization. As uh, in a previous life, I was a district engineer for Los Angeles district, and there was many times where uh, partners would come to the office or we would go out and visit and they say, I have a great idea for a project, but it was, um, I mean, it really was a point solution for a larger problem and it was totally uninformed of this is what was going on, uh, authorization appropriation at the federal level, uh, state bond actions, local referenda, so we were sort of chaotic in applying Good, good discipline thought to a problem. We think we need to get better at that, and we're trying. And I can talk about that later over uh, over here. Um, I think somehow along the way, and I think Silver Jackets can help in this, that we need to develop a better, longer term, uh, more holistic vision of where we're going. So the, the old adage for me is we don't know where we're going, every road gets us there. And I mean, I would really like to in some, some grown-up fashion, I think Silver Jackets, again, would be a great way to do this, is build ourselves a compelling multi-year, multi-equity, multi, uh, multi long-term vision that can pull us into an unknowable tomorrow, as opposed to, as opposed to us just push, pushing forward, as it were. Uh, and then finally, I think uh, one of the things that we need to do better, and we are developing pro programs to try to do this, is uh, uh, applying technologies and tools to these problems, uh, both, um, I, I think, on the getting the message out, though, the, the, what I just saw or what we just saw in the presentation really just, uh, I mean, really just fills a huge gap in my mind, and it's extremely helpful. And then um, uh, the last piece is having some sort of rigorous, uh, rigorous evidence-based uh, long-term investment strategy uh, because uh, I mean it's it, it is after all our tax dollars and we ought to be spending it um, we ought to be spending the best way we possibly can so those are some of the things that we're doing uh, and some of the some of the things I think we need to uh, we need to work on some of the places we're going into the future I think I've linked you to some of the smart folks who can talk about uh, both core problems but most specifically if you please do get a chance Ask one of the folks or myself about the Silver Jackets program. We will start gushing about the goodness of it, and it really is, there is really a lot of goodness in the program. So I'd be happy to entertain either any questions right now or save them for, for drinks later. I'm getting, I'm getting the hook, so we're saving for drinks later. So thanks very much.